So I'll be showing my screen once you tell me we're on. Yeah. And, uh, so yes. Uh, so welcome everybody uh, for our uh, second plenary talk of the conference, and it is given. It will be given by uh, Professor Heba El Degedi uh, from American University in Cairo, where she is currently the he uh, head of. Uh, uh, School of Humanities, uh, Chair of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. She has done her PhD from University of Birmingham and she works uh, in various projects, uh, uh, in, including uh, the project, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, Tempest project, which I don't know much about, but uh, I, I, I'm sure you will hear from her uh, for about that. So, Heba, can you please uh, share your screen? Okay, sure. Okay. I think it's just requesting that I uh, give access to Zoom to share my screen. Uh, Anil, are you around? Yeah, okay. Okay, is that all? Yes. We okay, can perfect. see your screen. Okay, perfect. So hello everyone, and thank you so much for this kind of invitation uh, to the conference. Uh, it does seem to be um, a kind of holding so many interesting sessions related to STEAM or STEM in general, and I'll speak more about these variations that we have. Um, so the topic that I'm offering and talking about today is about STEAM uh, Power 2, and of course it might look a bit weird, but we'll say more about that, and social responsibility uh, in higher education. Um, this is where I'm actually from. I'm from Egypt, um, which is very well known by its history, by its culture, uh, 7,000 years of, of history from this place. Of course, I think one of the main things that pops up in someone's mind when you mention Egypt is the pyramids. So I thought to start with the location of where I'm from. Um, sometimes uh, we've been mis kind of understood of having the, the desert so much and we, sometimes we get questions like, do you have cars, do you live in the pyramids? So just a little bit of a clarification, this is our history, but of course modern age did arrive to Egypt, so no worries about that. To show a little bit more about our location, uh, this is actually a map. It's coming from the American University in Cairo, where I'm located from. And it's very interesting to see the number of graduates and alumni from diff different countries who came to study the various programs at the university. And I was so surprised to see that we have uh, 79 graduates actually from India who joined the American University in Cairo on different programs. In terms of distance, uh, of course, the map doesn't really show much in terms of uh, the distance between the two countries, but having had the, the luxury to uh, actually visit uh, India, uh, it would take like five hours or so in terms of flight. A um, little bit more about going back to the American University in Cairo, a little bit in terms of the fact finding, uh, we are actually one of the very old universities in Egypt and in the region. And uh, actually, if you go back to its launch and its history, uh, it's actually uh, over 100 years old. Um, we actually, uh, oh, no, oops, I just go back to that. Um, it was launched in 1919. And a few years back, we celebrated the centennial of the, of the university. It has 40 undergraduate uh, programs. Uh, at the undergraduate level, uh, 24 graduate uh, diplomas, master programs, PhD programs. In addition to all of that, it actually also offers non-degree programs. Um, it had uh, various international and national accreditations as well, just to give a little brief of the university. In terms of my research interest, um, as it was mentioned in my, in my bio, and you can find that a little bit more on the website of the conference itself, my background is actually science education. Um, and I started off with a PhD program in science education with the University of Birmingham. But then gradually as uh, I think research in general is trying to push the boundaries between various disciplines, uh, interest into crossing these boundaries to other disciplines such as STEM, STEAM education and others as well. I've actually started to even gain my own personal research interest. 
So although the background is science education, it does go beyond that to some of these very new buzzwords in the field that we'll talk more about. Uh, in addition to that, um, education sustainable development is another kind of, you know, big kind of area and a big discipline that I'm interested in. And it goes along with what's happening internationally uh, in terms of the sustainable development goals, uh, the 2030, if you're also aware of that. Teacher education, um, in-service and pre-service are fields of also my interest. So I'll be sharing at the end of the presentation uh, and my email address and further communication so we can get along uh, if, if that's the situation. Uh, Heba, uh, just, yep. uh, just a minute. Uh, we are, we are seeing some blank uh, rectangles uh, on our screen. So maybe what you oh. do is just uh, stop sharing for a minute. Okay, uh, sure. Close uh, or minimize all other Zoom windows. Okay, Please. and also I can't, the sound from your side is very weak. Uh, just minimize all other Zoom windows that will probably okay. solve the problem. Let me try again then. So let me see, sharing again. All right. Okay, it should be on now. Is it any better? Uh, not sure. Uh, see, have you uh, closed all the chat box and uh, all other boxes from Zoom? Uh, okay, let me see. Let me try to do that again. Or at least minimize them. Yep, let me see that. Any better? Uh... On top, there is still one more window. Which, which one is... more window. I mean, that's the, uh, okay. And at bottom, there is some window. There we go. Is uh, that it? Bottom window, bottom window is gone now. Any but better? Yes. Yeah, that is, this is better. Are we good to go? Yes, thanks. Okay, can just go one more, one slide back. So, okay, there we go. So these are my areas of interest. I'm sorry about that disturbance. And then here we go. These are the key arguments that I'll be actually talking about today um, in the presentation. So we'll be looking at kind of like dissecting the title of the, of the talk into several areas. One of them is related to the role of universities, higher education institutions in the 21st century and beyond. Another key argument will be related to education sustainable development or the ESD which is a major component related to sustainable development goals. That is a very big topic uh, locally, regionally, and internationally. And of course, our favorite topic from the conference, even uh, theme and interest is STEM and STEAM education. What is it about? How is it being uh, presented in higher education institutions? Is, are we doing the right job or not? And then finally, how we can unfold and actually bring in social responsibility to our discussion as a whole. And in doing so, and in providing for these so many different areas, universities, uh, education sustainable development, STEM and STEAM education, and social responsibility, uh, comes actually this term, which is put in the title, which is STEAM Power 2. And this will be the core focus of the presentation uh, today with the unfolding aspects uh, as it's shown in the diagram. So what is the role of university in the 21st century and beyond? We can actually think of so many different areas where higher education institutions can start to lead nations as a whole. Some might think of universities as the knowledge share, some might think about uh, its role and responsibility in this current uh, phase and era related to technology. And some might think about it in terms of the workforce and how it prepares the, the generations to find jobs with certain certificates and credentials. And since there's so many talks and areas of views about what is the role of universities or higher education institutions as a whole, I think it's very good that we think about you know, some examples of what is taking place uh, at universities internationally. There is, of course, uh, something which is very well known in terms of the rankings of universities, which is the QS rankings. I just pulled a couple of logos from universities uh, taking different places internationally from the rankings. And we can just think about, you know, once you put a name of university or title of university, you might associate a specific 
area or specific discipline or a specific focus. So these are just representations from different um, uh, international universities, and we can associate and think about their roles. But I think as we are taking this conversation further, and the topic is related to the role of higher education institutions, i.e. universities, I think it's also good that we think about this exercise and uh, share together our thoughts of what you think would be the role of universities that need to be played in today's society. So if you have your mobile phone um, nearby, or if you have actually access to a, a website browser, uh, either you can scan using your mobile phone camera, the QR code, uh, or you can actually log in into the minty.com with this number, the 6422. Uh, 3659. And uh, please share your views of what you think uh, uh, you, the university role should be uh, in terms of today's society. So I'll just give you two minutes if you can do that. And once the time is up, I'll just uh, go and have a look at your comments and your uh, responses on the minty.com. Uh, so I'll move from this uh, actual window to another one. Um, and please let me know if things uh, don't go the way that I, I, I want it to go. But well, let me just see over here. OK, so this is actually uh, the minty.com. So if you go in um, and we're able to actually use the code, it will give you um, some reference or access to this site where you can put your responses uh, to what you think the role of universities have in terms of um, crucial roles in society these days. Um, I can go back again if you want to, to the, to the QR code, if that's going to be easier. I can see there's a large number of participants uh, here. So this is going back again to the QR code, if that will be of any help. And then forward again to the Minty meter. So if you have any problems, can you just let us know uh, on the chat so we can just make sure that this activity is going as planned. There we go. All right, so that means people are in. So employment opportunities, it has a role to be a facilitator, to educate, to mentor, and I'll just stop for a few minutes until the responses are coming in. Okay, got a few more seconds if you just want to pop in your response. I can tell even some of the keywords are coming from the plenary today or even from the session that I was in a few minutes ago. Okay. Well, it seems educate, uh, we can, you can just keep on going and I'll just uh, kind of pick a few of those just to uh, highlight and uh, 
uh, kind of emphasize what is written. So educate seems to be the most prominent response um, currently that is available now from the word count and the cloud. But there's also aspects related to social responsibility, critical engagement, empowerment, a safe space, uh, employment opportunities. That's the usual role we would expect for universities. But if we think about the new roles, so there are some roles of the universities, of course, would stay as is, but there might be new roles um, that are coming up and being brought to the for forefront of universities as we speak, given the change and the, the technology that we're facing, the advancement in knowledge uh, crisis that we are even going through locally and internationally, where universities need, need to shift from their current traditional roles to others uh, that might not have been the situation uh, 10, 20, 30 years uh, from where we are now. Networking is really an important part as well, uh, because once you have a university in place, I know some cities are actually built around universities. Um, work opportunities, uh, opportunities even for collaboration, businesses are all there because of the university is in a specific locality. Uh, it opens up gates, of course, gates for collaboration, gates for um, internships, gates for possibility of jobs, but also gates for exploration, gates for problem solving, uh, places where we can navigate our, our thinking, places where we can bring about uh, actually leaders in a specific field to resolve problems and issues in certain uh, places as well. So thank you so much for all of those who actually made, uh, made it to the Minty and uh, responded. So um, let's have a look at what is actually in the literature in terms of the roles of universities in general. So I hope I'll go back to the slide and take it from there. So from the literature, there seems to be, of course, some uh, correspondence and some alliance with what was just mentioned from the responses, but the roles of universities in society can actually help develop a culture of academic enterprise and knowledge entrepreneurship. It can actually provide for mutual conveners, assemblers of talent. There's a lot to do with innovation if we think out of the box of the traditional role of universities of just feeding in information and knowledge to those graduates or undergraduate students who come in. But it does provide for a safe place uh, to innovate and to uh, create. Um, universities might need to think of ways that even go beyond the expectations of societal transformation. Uh, today's plenary there, the topic was related to a, a social, actually motion or social movement related to science education. But we need to think uh, who would actually take the lead on that, that might be the universities at that point. And universities must become effective partners for global development. So all the different universities um, in the various regions might need to come together to think about how we can push the boundaries and the problems that we are facing internationally so they can become solvers of these issues and problems. And the following point looks actually at solving social problems and uh, again, providing for innovation. Uh, a point related to the networks and a point related to partnerships between different institutions, uh, different entities, different stakeholders in a specific uh, nation is also of extreme importance for the university to flourish and even make sure that its role uh, is on the right track. So given the role or the expectation of what universities should be doing, uh, it's important to link this with uh, an important topic, as I mentioned earlier, of the key argument related to educational sustainable uh, development. So just a, a quick notion of what it is. Uh, so if we were to think of defining what is uh, education sustainable development, these are very well known definitions from the literature, but it all relates to how the current generations are looking into the resources that are available in a specific locality to make sure that these resources will still continue for the future generations, depending on their needs uh, and depending on the, the changes that are taking place um, currently and in the future as well. So when you think about education sustainable development, we think about it in terms of how we can uh, actually provide for the knowledge and skills that are needed for our generations, 
the current ones, to ensure that their resources and the facilities that are available are also maintained for the next generations and the future ones as well. So it does rely a lot in terms of awareness and actions and possibilities for the future. Now, other important point related to the definition of education sustainable development is it's not just about uh, aspects related to the environment, but it goes beyond that to social aspects, cultural aspects, uh, and of course, the environment too, but also the economical aspects as well uh, in any given society. So these are all kind of part and parcel of the definition of education sustainable development. So when you think about what are the international movements that took place in the relation to education sustainable development and what are universities doing in terms of that their role as well so we can link the concepts together as we move from one item to the other you might have heard of the millennium development goals that took place uh, like 10 or 20 years ago but then the movement uh, in relation to education which many of us of course in this talk uh, are, are attending in in relation to their um, interest knowing what education can do to, to actually fulfill the requirements of a sustainable development. In 2005 to 2014, it was mentioned that this is the decade for education sustainable development. A lot of international projects at that point started to evolve around funding different development countries and developed countries to maintain their actions and their practices um, in terms of probably um, even programs that are offered at the higher education institutional level so that their students and uh, participants in these programs are aware of their actions, what to do and what not to do to maintain the resources that are currently available. Um, a very big kind of push for the countries and globally to know more about education sustainable development was mandated by the SDGs uh, 2030, or what is known by the Sustainable Development Goals. There's 17 of them. And as you can see here, there are different emphasis in each of these goals in, in relation to what exactly is needed on, on the uh, international level. So no poverty, zero hunger, uh, good health. Quality education, this is definitely an area where we need to emphasize more. And here we're looking at not just higher education institutions or at the university level in relation to what they should be doing or could be doing in relation to ESD, but also um, even at the school level. Gender equality, uh, clean water and sanitation, and so many other aspects that are very much relevant to what our talks uh, globally and uh, locally are in relation to resolving big issues that are we are facing currently. One of them that is very well known is climate change. There's a lot of push for universities to think about uh, reducing uh, any carbon um, impact that we have, whether at the institutional level or even individually. So this talk will take uh, place in the next few slides as well. So Egypt has actually also embarked on a change, and the change is not only a change in relation to its national uh, goal, but also at every single level as well with the 2030 Egyptian vision. There's so many different countries that even took uh, the responsibility of looking at the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs 2030, and started to restructure its uh, strategic plan, its priorities, its national interests to start to think about what universities should do, what institutions should do to actually get uh, these uh, goals achieved by 2030. A big uh, contribution related to, um, to sustainable development goals, but also pillars of education is what the laws report in 1996 provided in terms of having any educational program look into concepts that we need to know, so learning to know, learning to do related to skills uh, that we are embarking on. Uh, a lot of emphasis comes also from literature, if we think about uh, many of the theories of learning that we know of, Dewey, for example, where there's a lot of emphasis of what we should be doing and uh, the experiential learning as well. Learning to live together, that's a very societal uh, need. And when we look in terms of universities, we look in terms of programs, we look in terms of progress, we look in terms of even transformation in general, learning to live together needs to be part and parcel of this equation too. 
And so these are the main four pillars related to um, education as well, but also specifically to education sustainable development. So to link these together, uh, there's a very short video uh, that I'm going to share with you, which are bringing various voices from different entities and individuals, uh, where there's, there's really a big push to issues related to say sustainable development goals, but also the, uh, the net zero movement that is taking place as well here. So hopefully get the movie on and share here. What kind of world do I want to live in? I think about this question a lot. For our generation and for specifically my group of people, which is refugees, the circumstances might dismantle any vision of the future that we have. You're trying to rebuild, you're trying to make a future for yourself and then the climate related disaster come and you start again. It's not about how it's affecting you now, it's about how it's affecting you your entire life. First step to understand is that we're all a part of it. None of us are going to be left out by the crisis. We're at a stage where if we don't act now, really there won't be very much left. There are generations that will never see certain things that we grew up seeing in real life. We have to start treating this like the emergency it is. To achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have to go from an intention to a serious commitment. Business leaders really need to rethink how they conduct their business and invest in creating systems that are climate friendly. Action I would like to see is accountability. Structures being put in place where countries aren't just asked to do something, but they're kept accountable to the decisions that they make. There has to be that strong collaboration between government, between corporations, between youth activists to drive change forward. The world I would want to live in is a world where imagining the future is not a privilege. I want to live in a world where people do not give up on hope, hope that a positive change is possible. The fact that you're listening today means that you are willing to make a change. So this is actually the key message that is coming from this video, but also from the presentation as well. How we can think to be more responsible in relation to the actions that we do on a daily basis uh, as individuals, but also as institutions and as higher education institutions in particular, uh, when we think about ESD and now uh, the new or the other concept that we're going to talk about, uh, which is the social responsibility aspect. So social responsibility from the kind of few kind of um, uh, kind of points that were mentioned in the previous uh, video showcases so many people who are getting disturbed about practices that are currently being made um, on different various levels and there needs to be action. So the action would only happen if we are able to infuse a sense of responsibility amongst uh, various individuals, uh, institutions, uh, governments, countries, and globally as well. So only with that, we can start to see a sense of uh, being proactive and being uh, even agents of change in our nations and elsewhere. So when you think about social responsibility, uh, this is a definition that is found in the literature um, that I, that you, that if you can just spend a, a couple of minutes just looking at that. And it really is important when we think about social responsibility, not only in terms of the usual corporate social responsibility, because that's very much kind of the trend of businessmen um, when they try to share some of their assets or some of their um, even revenues to the society which, around them, which is definitely a good thing. But what I'm really trying to emphasize more is what we call the university social responsibility. And that is how it's put together in this kind of frame of the topic of today and the talk of today, what are universities, uh, what and how should they be held accountable in terms of their social responsibility? So here in this diagram, you can see that when universities are aware of their impact 
are aware of their actions, they take that into consideration, even at the very simplest aspects. So even universities going paperless or universities trying to find different ways to irrigate the gardens uh, on their campuses, or even provide for opportunities for programs to emphasize uh, sustainable development and social responsibility. This is all part and parcel of what a university might need to think about if we were to move towards this direction of higher education being a responsible entity rather than being just consumers of knowledge from other entities as well. So this is a, just a quick example of what we've been doing at the American University in Cairo. And it's um, with very much of, of pride. Uh, it's actually ranked the first in Egypt and in Africa in terms of its green metric. And it produces various reports to showcases uh, actually what it does and what it's, it's providing in terms of its action uh, on a daily basis. So it provides annually uh, the carbon footprint report and it showcases what is it's consuming in terms of its water, its energy, how it's trying to um, provide and encourage even individuals to take responsibility of very simple actions such as carpooling, for example, and to lower the carbon emissions that we uh, actually do on a daily basis without being aware of. That's one of the aspects. It also provides for sustainability report Again, it's linked with the SDGs, the 2030, and it showcases how much it is aware of its role um, in the country and in its locality to align with all of the aspects and the interests as well. Uh, it, in addition to these two, there's also the Green Guide Report, and it showcases what it does in terms of its waste management, a very important aspect, um, what it does in terms of its outreach and its awareness too. And what it does at the academic level and its research and the academic level is what I'll be talking about in the next few slides. Um, but it has to go with the individual social responsibility. So even if the university is very much aware and is providing what it should be, it cannot happen unless we are trying to embed and infuse a sense of social responsibility at the individual level. You might be aware of uh, Greta Thunberg, a, a Swedish 19-year-old uh, currently, uh, who actually took the, the lead in terms of providing youth to have a voice and a choice to lead a campaign related to uh, the critical issue of climate change. And she actually started a, a move, which is called Friday for Future, where school, university, and, school and uh, university uh, students would actually sometimes come up and have a march or they have a strike in relation to bring their voices up and clear to the administrators and to countries to ensure that the uh, carbon footprint is taken care of and that climate change is a big issue that governments need to act, act upon. This is a, a very interesting part related to um, the global uh, warming in general and the climate change. Uh, I've actually got this from uh, the website related to uh, Ed Hawkins, who actually um, br brought up the stripes, and it showcases how much there's been a change in the, even the temperature uh, from the 1990s and onwards. And this actual slide is coming from India. So it showcases the rise of temperature that we're all aware of and we all kind of feel it. Um, there's disruption in terms of the environment, disruptions of our daily lives as well related to climate change. So what should we do at the individual level and at the university level? So STEAM comes in in a very prominent way. And STEAM, um, just for, for just a quick awareness, I know this is a conference related uh, to STEM education. So the S is for the science, technology, engineering, and maths. But the STEAM comes in with a different uh, perspective. It comes in with the A. And the A is a representative of the arts. Um, there's a lot uh, when I attend conferences uh, that I'm seeing different uh, interpretations and different localizations of what STEM, STEAM, or STEAM with a double M or a double S or a double E might mean. And it all goes back to and boils down to the point of localizing what is needed. So we might be borrowing this concept from different countries, but to bring it to the forefront and relate it to the local needs is extremely of importance. And this is why uh, some uh, nations or some countries have actually uh, maintain specific terminologies related to this combination, the interdisciplinarity of the STEM uh, or the STEAM, and made sure that it's representative of what their country needs and what uh, the forefront of the strategic plan uh, to bring the country uh, up uh, is also related to. 
um, in an effort that I've done in, in also making sure that to steam uh, as a terminology and as a concept of interdisciplinarity that can bring in all the different concepts and skills from the disciplines is well known, not just for those who are English speakers, but those who are also Arabic speakers. Uh, there was a, a MOOC, uh, which is a massive open online uh, course uh, that was actually hosted on one of the platforms that provides for this opportunity for Arabic speakers to know more about the practices related to STEM and STEAM education with an emphasis on teachers, teacher education, and even parents as well as they can bring it and connect it to life especially as we are facing, um, we're not facing specific issues related to just science on its own, but it's very much uh, interdisciplinary. So this is the STEAM Power 2, and this is actually bringing in um, uh, the different combinations of a transdisciplinary concept. And this is something that I've coined, and it showcases STEM with all of its disciplines, the ESD with its emphasis on the social, environmental, and cultural aspects, and the arts, it has an emphasis on the 21st century skills, global citizenship, but also a lot to do with innovative pedagogies. And I was very fortunate uh, through this um, actually concept to provide it to students at the American University uh, uh, in Cairo as a higher education institution to bring about uh, this new concept and interdisciplinarity and even transdisciplinarity approach as well. So what I did is that I provided a course related to STEAM Power 2, and students were at that point um, thinking of themselves of agents of change, and they would bring about concepts uh, that are related to problems that they are facing on a daily basis in their lo Egyptian locality. And it will replicate more of a 3D concept. So it will bring about aspects of sustainable development. It will bring about their voices and choices. One of the theoretical aspects that is provided in this particular area or discussion. And of course, the social responsibility, whether it's economic, ethical, or environmental. Uh, this is the kind of an, an outline of the course uh, in very uh, in a brief kind of way, because I know I'm running out of time right now. Uh, so these are different modules looking at education sustainable development, but bringing the STEM and STEAM education as a transdisciplinary uh, approach in general. And then students were required to walk in to actually work in groups and to come up with uh, a local problem that they are facing uh, in their real locality uh, in the Egyptian context, and then try to think how they can bring about concepts and uh, skills from the disciplines of STEAM education and related to uh, the areas of focus of education sustainable development as well. So are they directing their uh, problem to an environmental issue, a social issue, or an economical issue, or more, more than one actually, because that's usually was the case. So this is a uh, kind of a very brief slide of some of the concepts and topics of their projects students were working on. And in the next few slides, I know we're running out of time. This is uh, a few of their projects, vocational education as a right for all the students to know um, and actually have access to good quality education, traffic, destructive uh, growth related to the large number of uh, population in general. And here in each one of them, it showcases the skills, the dimensions and the values that were provided in each of their projects as a whole. So I'll run through this extremely quickly. And as a conclusion of this and a, a real kind of talk uh, to take it forward, not just talk, it's important that higher education institutions would think about their roles as not just providers of knowledge, but enablers of innovation and a place where students can actually have a voice to showcase their areas of interest and innovation and social responsibility as they come along uh, and see themselves as agents uh, of change uh, in general for social justice and for social uh, change and transformation in education as well. And uh, this is just my context uh, of, uh, if anyone wants to contact me, just again, a quick QR uh, scan of this, uh, this code uh, you'll get connected directly to my LinkedIn account. And with that, I'd like to uh, thank you for this opportunity to share what we've been doing at the American University in Cairo, but also to provide a place where we can see the higher education institutions as a change agent uh, for better uh, learning, but also for social responsibility and involvement. Thank you so much. Thanks, Heba. Uh, 
we have some questions in chat but uh, before that i wanted to understand more i think uh, the last part of the talk you uh, went through a bit quickly uh, so we, when you said you offered this course uh, so what are, what was the background of the students who are, who participated in the course sure uh, the background this is these are they are offered in two actual uh, cohorts uh, it was offered to a number of students who are, are the graduate level they're ma students uh, they're in the program of education and uh, it was also offered as an elective course for undergraduate students in different majors. So the American University in Cairo is actually a liberal arts institution where students go in and probably not deciding on their major as yet, but they take a couple of courses and then eventually they start to declare their major. So the, the projects, I have a, a huge amount of projects and numbers of projects in different areas. Um, as a result of this course has been offered uh, a couple of years now, consecutive number of years uh, to the MA students and to the undergraduate students as well. Thanks. Uh, so there is one question by uh, Prajwal. Prajwal, would you like to uh, unmute and ask the question directly? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, that's okay. You can just read it out. Yeah, okay. Uh, so she's asking, uh, among universities' responsibility towards SDGs, should there be a goal of moving to 100% public funding and a move away from uh, funding from uh, military sources or sources that prioritize profits over people? That's that's a very big question, and it uh, it's it's very difficult to answer uh, directly. But um, what I have to say is that universities in general in Egypt they are very much aligned with the Supreme Council of Universities, which uh, oversees its programs, provides for its accreditation, and provides for its funding. In our case, which is the American University in Cairo. The situation is a little bit different because it's not a national university, it's a not-for-profit university, and therefore it actually has an endowment which provides for its funding uh, by the board of trustees and, and according to its facilities that it's needed and providing for um, any programs and new programs. It, this is more of a governing kind of place where it has much more freedom than national universities. So it really varies depending on the system that you're looking into. And it depends also in terms of the country as well. So some countries have this very decentralized system where universities can take the lead of what they want to do. But others are very uh, kind of centralized, uh, particularly in Egypt, in the national system where it has to follow, of course, the Supreme Council of Universities, where the budget is mandated uh, in a specific way and the expenditure is also mandated in a specific way as well. Thanks. Uh, question from Ayush. Did some of some students and or teachers struggle with aspects of the curriculum or pedagogy if yes any stories or insights um struggle and i'm not sure what the, what is meant by exact struggle but uh, what i would say is that the beginning of the course students had to get a lot in terms of content to know what is uh, educational sustainable development first but when they started to embark on the projects and know what is happening on at the international level they got the hang of it and then they felt so much excited and even towards like midway through the course, uh, they started to reflect on their own practices at the individual level. So many mentioned that they started to be more aware of, you know, closing the taps if they're not using it, uh, switching off the lights, very simple everyday actions. We're not aware of that. Cutting off plastic bags, because in Egypt, for example, there's no mandate to cut off the plastic bags. But it's done at some um, kind of uh, organizations or NGOs where they're trying as much as possible to bring awareness to the misuse of plastic bags and reduce it as much as possible. Uh, in terms of curricular design, since they're working in groups with um, the facilitation and support and scaffold that I provide them, they are able then to see STEAM Power 2 come together with the combination of uh, content and specific skills from science and engineering and technology and so on, but also to highlight how can this actually be presented uh, to the areas that they're looking into. So, for example, the We Garden project looks into... Um, how they can develop compost, for example. So they bring in concept from science and then they bring in activities where they can do as a hands-on. And then they think about really bringing in even videos and YouTube videos and some texts where they can, it, it's then actually presented on a website or a blog. So the end, and I, I actually made sure that I close my presentation uh, to leave the 15 minutes for, for questions, but I think 
it'll be more richer than uh, because it'll bring about the questions that everyone was looking into as I was presenting. So all of the projects students were handing over at the end of the semester were actually blogs or websites. And uh, as they went along and started to design the website, uh, they would uh, share um, on a frequent basis how they developed and brought in the aspects and they will get feedback even from other um, individuals from the class as well so that they can uh, see more of a collaborative rather than a competitive uh, group work and group uh, assignment. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so there is next question by Ravi Subramaniam. Uh, in India, in terms of uh, the universities are in general low in the higher educational high, institutional hierarchy with professional in education institutions like technology, medicine, and law having a much higher status. Mm -hmm. These are generally are outside the universities and are, are institutions by themselves. Do you find something similar in Egypt? Um, generally speaking, um, education as a, as a discipline is always a low status discipline if you compare it to medicine and engineering. I think this is a, an international trend. So if I were to say and introduce myself, I'm a professor of education, that would be one thing. But if I'm saying I'm a professor of medicine, it'll be another thing. So there's always this high status of specific disciplines rather than, um, than education as a discipline. If we're comparing between higher education institutions, we do have the, the um, enrollment would be for students joining higher education institutions as universities. But institutions, something like a two year, a three year uh, institution would be a less socially accepted and respected. Um, so it does cause of a social kind of, uh, of, let's say stigma more or less. If I'm a graduate of a university, I'll be looked in one way and will provide opportunities for career and jobs. If uh, in comparison to if I'm a graduate of a, a two year institution after high school, it will be very much different and it will provide for very much limited opportunities in terms of careers and uh, job opportunities as well. Uh, so I think uh, what, I will just uh, ask that question in different way because I think what Ravi means here is uh, in India, we have this system that uh, the engineering institutes and uh, medica medical uh, colleges are separate from universities. Oh, so, okay. No, we so don't have that. Same in Egypt. No, no, no. no. The, the it's medicine, part of university. It's part of the university, exactly. Maybe I, I misread the, the question. Yes, it's part of universities, yes. Okay, uh, the, I had one question uh, about that uh, course which you offered again. Um, uh, so you have been offering this course uh, for uh, num uh, two, three years, you said. Uh, so are there any uh, alumni who come back and uh, tell uh, about their, their real world insights and how that course has been uh, helping them in the, in, uh, after the graduation? That's a very interesting question. Uh, what I've been always asking my students as they come to the part where they're doing their projects is I tell them, don't think about this as an assignment. Think about it as a contribution to your surroundings and your areas of influence or your circles of influence as well. So some of them are teachers or they have some connections with schools. Some of them have their own professional LinkedIn accounts and they've actually posted them because it was all free. And we think about, as I'm mentioning, social responsibility. So part of the social responsibility is that we don't close uh, the creation of these projects just for the course, but we provide them and, and facilitate, um, let's say, the marketing of these projects elsewhere. But there haven't been actually specific examples where a project uh, or one of these uh, websites has actually been brought to one of the schools and we have results coming back. Uh, this is, I always mention that if you do it, if you share it with someone and you apply it, please make sure that you, you bring in results back. But because of this course is actually offered at the end of the, as a kind of senior level, many of the students, once they graduate, they leave the university and it's very difficult to maintain the connection once they're out. Okay. So uh, there's another question by Mashud. Uh, so what is the status of science education research in Egypt? Are there many universities which offer a uh, program, science education research as a program, as either for PhD or? Yep, 
Uh, science education is, of course, one of the main disciplines, uh, the faculties of education in the national universities. They offer master degrees programs and they offer the PhD programs. It's not the case at my university, at the American University in Cairo, because we don't have a specific discipline, disciplinary um, program. Our programs are related to educational leadership and is related to international comparative education. So it's not per discipline. It's uh, more of a comprehensive uh, MA program. And we do not currently have a PhD program. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, uh, I think we can all unmute and thank our speaker by clapping. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heba. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for...